right. That took this off? Hmm? That took this off? I, didn't, I never got one. We're ready to begin with the student athletes for Utah. We have Brandon Taylor, Jordan Loveridge, Jakob Pertle. We'll now take questions for our student athletes. Nice. No if you have questions, question. raise your hand. We'll bring a mic to you. Yes, no questions. Here we go. Yeah, none. Let's go right there. For you guys, it, now you're here, the feeling, all you three of you guys were here last year. What's it like this time around having that experience already and being here now? You got it, Joy. Uh, I mean, it feels great, you know, to be back at the tournament, uh, especially back with these guys and, you know, the rest, and, you know, the guys that haven't been here. It's just a great experience for all of us. Yeah, we're, we're obviously all very excited to come back here. Um, and having the experience from last year will hopefully help us out a little bit, but we're not gonna we're not gonna count on that. We're still gonna go 100%. Definitely, it just feels good. You know, it's a tremendous honor to even be in this stadium. You know, to be in the first round and to be in a part of this tournament. You know, so let's make the best of it. Right here. You know, earlier this week, you guys had talked about Fresno State being similar to Oregon in the sense of what they how they played. Uh, now that you've had a little more prep, being able to see film on Fresno State, well, what's your approach? I mean, are you looking at that? Are they similar? And, and how are you addressing that? Well, Fresno State, they, they have a lot of athletes. They have a lot of good players as well. They have a, they have a perimeter four men, like we have perimeter four men that can shoot it. You know, they get out in passing lanes. And, and if you're sloppy, they capitalize on those mistakes and often get out and get a lot of steals during the game, you know, and they try to they try to run you, they try to run you, they try to speed you up, you know, a lot like Oregon pace, you know. So we've had some time to dial it in and, and really focus on the get back to the fundamentals because you have to be fundamentally sound to beat this team. John Fabian with the branding iron. Uh, what's it going to take to not let Marvell Harris have a big game and beat you guys? Um, we got to guard him as a team. We um, we got to help each other out. We got to um, stop him from driving to the basket, but at the same time, try and take away his his three point shot because he's definitely a, a good shooter too. Um, so we we got to be enough of other guys and then help out again, like not let him get going early and. Yeah, just just be dialed in together as a team and help each other out. Back there. Uh, Myron Metcalf, ESPN. For, for Brandon, uh, what did you all do to put the Pac-12 title game loss behind you and refocus and get prepared for the matchup tomorrow? Get to practice as soon as possible, to be quite honest with you. It was one of those that just put a nasty taste in your mouth, you know, making it to the championship and having a game like that is not a game that I even – envisioned it going you know I don't think none of us envisioned it going so the thing was to go to sleep you know wake up the next morning get home um, so as soon as selection Sunday came we were just excited to see who we were playing against we were excited to see that we had another opponent that we had to get rid of and stop thinking about the last game we got to practice and from there I think everyone's focus was back to normal you know it was a renewed focus you know it was more like this is our last season, you know, this is our last season and this is the NCAA season, so let's not worry about what we've done in the past. The only thing we can focus on is, is Fresno State and this NCAA tournament. Let's go right there and then there. Yeah, back there, go ahead. Uh, Patrick Kinahan, uh, Sports Zone Network. Uh, Jakob, you don't, uh, against Fresno, you don't have guys that are your size that be guarding you. How do you think that teams that don't have the size to match up with you usually guard you? Um, I want to say usually they come double me, but I don't really want to worry about that too much, how they're going to guard me. Um, I'm just going to take whatever they throw at me. I'm, I'm going to still try and be aggressive. If they, if they come and double me, I'm a, a, I'll find open teammates. And if they don't, I'll, I'll be aggressive and, and look for my own shot a little more. So I'll see what, what comes at me in the game, what kind of game plan they have, and I'll, I'll adapt to it. Right here. 
uh, Nick Grubb from the Denver Post, uh, to follow up, maybe the three best big men in the country or in this region. Do you feel like you're part of uh, maybe a big, a big sort of showcase in this region? Do you, you know, how do you match up maybe among, among them, even if you're not playing them immediately? Does it feel like you're, you're sort of stepping into something big, so to speak? Um, to be honest, I haven't even noticed that. Um, I guess there are um, a number of talented um, big men in this in this side of the bracket, but right now we're we're worried about Fresno State. Um, so if it ever comes to a matchup against one of those other big, I'll, I'll be happy to take the challenge. But right now it's it's on the on the first game. Go ahead. Jakob, Brandon just said as a senior, and obviously Jordan's a senior also, that they're looking at it, that this is their last go around. They want to make sure they go out right. You're a sophomore, but obviously, you know, you have the NBA possibilities. How are you approaching it? Um, I don't, I don't want to go into this tournament thinking um, that it's going to be my, my last tournament. I, I know it might be my last tournament, so... I'm just going to go in it and, and try and enjoy every second, try and make a, a, the biggest run possible, play as many games as possible. And if it should be my, my last season here, then I want to make sure that I've enjoyed everything. And if not, I hope I'll be back here next year. Right there. Yeah, Jordan, this is your last one. Uh, thoughts about playing your final NCAA tournament? considering all you've kind of been through with this program from when you were a freshman to now. What are your thoughts going into your last one? Um, just really excited. You know, it's, uh, it wasn't even thought of, you know, a couple years ago that Utah would even be uh, on this stage, you know, a number three seed. So uh, it's just exciting for the whole state, you know, our whole program. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just kind of bittersweet, you know, being the last one, last go around. But uh, we're just going to try to make it the best. You know, last year you guys were, you know, new to this process, new to the NCAA tournament. Um, but all three of you are veterans here with this team. How, how do you think last year's experience will kind of translate into this year and maybe that success? Take that first, Brent. Well, I think just having the experience, you know, of getting to the Sweet 16 last year, I think we got a taste of what it's like to to survive in advance, no matter what it, it might be ugly, you know, it, it's not going to be a perfect game. You know, as long as you, if you take the 40 minutes and you try to attack each and every four minute segment, you know, like it's your last, you know, I think you'll be in this position where you want to be. And I think that's the biggest takeaway from last year to this year is you break the game down. And we like to break it down in four minute, se four minute segments. And, and try to execute our game plan as much as possible and try to go hard defensively as, um, as hard as possible. Um, I think last year's experience can definitely help us out as a team, like knowing how, how playing basketball in the tournament fails, knowing how, knowing how the whole process um, works. But it's it's not something we can like rely on. We still got to go into every single game with 100% um, effort and focus, and we got to be dialed in into the game plan because it really doesn't matter what happened last year. Um, if we have a, a back shooting day, like it's, it, it only takes one day at one game to kick us out of the tournament and end our season. So the, the experience from last year can definitely help us out, but like I said, it's not something we can rely on. Yeah, uh, going off what Jakob said, yeah, it was, you know, it was a great experience, you know, a good run for us. Um, but I feel like, you know, it's a whole different team. And, um, you know, we, we, I think the biggest thing we'll take from that is that you got to come out every play, you know, every minute. That could be your, your last possession, and that could be the most important possession of the game. You know, we got to um, just make sure there's no little things or, or make sure we uh, leave it all out there on the court. Anything else for our student athletes? Okay, we'll dismiss them at this time. Thank you, man. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.
can't see a soul. Yeah. You out there, Gooner? <laughs> we now have Utah head coach Larry Kraskoviak. Coach, we just start with a statement of how you feel about being in, here in Denver and your matchup. Well, obviously, it's a, it's an amazing time of year. It's a it's a privilege to be a part of March Madness, and our guys are excited. It's uh, I've always said if if I only had a TV for a month, that TV uh, rental would start tomorrow when the games kicked off, and then I'd want my. Uh, ability to watch it until the Masters is over and to actually be a participant in it is, is pretty special for us. So here we go. Thank you, Coach. Questions for the coach? Jeremiah Jensen, KSL in Salt Lake. Coach, after you reviewed the game film of Oregon, what did you learn and how do you get this team back on track as you begin this uh, next journey? Well, um, you know, after you're pummeled for 30 minutes of the game, that's kind of the uh, feeling you take with you home and then watch the game again. It's a tie ball game 10 minutes into it and things are going pretty well. And uh, we missed a couple open shots. We had a couple ill-advised turnovers and it kind of opened up the floodgates. And, you know, it, Oregon's a high-powered team and they'd been doing that to teams at the end of the first half. It'd been kind of a regular, happened with Arizona the night before in the semifinal game. And, um, you know, a lot of basketball mistakes uh, between the turnovers. We had 11 turnovers in that first half. It led to 18 points for Oregon. And they're, they're just too good, you know, to to shoot yourself in the foot like that and, and give them easy opportunities. And then on the glass was the same thing. And that's what we've always talked about is, uh, especially like you get into elite level team like that, or you get into the NCAA tournament like we are now, um, there's a lot of good players, a lot of great teams and coaches, and you have to take away easy ones. You know, team, you're not gonna pitch shut, shutouts uh, and it's okay if another team scores. You just have to make sure that you're you're following the game plan and you're not making it easy in the form of throwing them the ball. And uh, that's an easy one that you can't defend. And then obviously in and around the basket with the offensive rebounds are the ones that you can't defend. So we were pretty good in the other parts, but um, you know, it was, a, it was a little bit of a humbling experience as I talked about after the game. We've had a good week of practice and uh, much like everything else, you gotta get back in the saddle and, and get after it. Let's go right there first. Josh Furlong, KSL.com. Uh, Larry, last year, obviously, it was a little bit of, you know, you've come back into the NCAA tournament after not being in there for a while as Utah as a program. Um, has your message changed this year as you approach this, this tournament with your players? I mean, I know you say you, you kind of keep things pretty regimented the same way, but is there a different approach in your mind in, in the sense of this year and the experience and building on that? You know, there really isn't. Um, and I don't think that answer is ever going to change for me. I, the way we prepare, uh, the focus, you know, whether we're starting at the beginning of the season in a tournament in Puerto Rico, it's all a one, one game priority, learning as much as you can about the opponent and, and getting after it. You know, it's, uh, we have a different team. We're playing a different team. We're obviously in a different city. And I think that's what makes this time of the season so special is you need – regardless of who's back or any of the environment. It's all about having your players step up and trying to do something special. And that's what we practice for. And, you know, we're in this situation now, and that's what we're going to continue to stress is uh, a lot of the fundamentals. It, I've mentioned it before. Um, I'm a big fan of the, of the Tony Dungy mentality from reading a number of his books is that you do the ordinary things extraordinarily well. And so – even though we're in a, you know, extraordinary point of the season and a super fun time, I think it does get back to a lot of the fundamentals and there's no reason for us to try to spice it up and, and talk about anything different. I think we all understand the, the importance of the time. Right there. Uh, Pat Kenahan, the Zone Sports Network. Uh, with that in mind, Coach, do you sense any improved level of confidence from your players from this year to last year now? No, uh, I, I, th I think confidence is a, is a tricky thing. It's, uh, it's always a fine line. You know, I, uh, one thing I noticed that's real similar to last year is that there's a sense of urgency uh, based on like the last two practices we've had. Uh, 
I've got a little bit of an edge about me, but my players reminded me the last two days that we're about to, you know, do something that's pretty special. And the confidence, I don't think, comes into play. I think you have to make play. You're only as good as your next play or your next game. And so anything that's been going on up to that point, I think, is a little bit dangerous, whether you're playing good or bad. You know, you don't want to be breaking out the scrapbook if you're on a nice winning streak and trusting that that's just going to continue because the level uh, is so enhanced this time of year. And I think the same thing goes if a team's not playing particularly well at the end of the season, you still get into this tournament. It's kind of a fresh slate and it's a time to start over. So, um, you know, more of in the moment kind of thing and, um, you know, different group, different team. So that's what, that's what we're focusing on. Let's go right there. No, I won't come Coach, Nick Rowe from the Denver Post. You, you have such a unique advantage with Jakob. Did you, in, in a game that's gone away from the center so much in recent years, did you have to sort of reach back to, to an older style or whatever yeah. you knew growing up, coming up, of how to take advantage of him? And then now that you're in the tournament, in games that so often break open from the backcourt, how, how do you keep the focus on what he can do so well? No, you're right. Um, you know, it's a lost art. There's fewer and fewer throwback centers. Um, you know, and then with that, we're losing some of the skill with throwing the ball into the post, just the simple skill of feeding the post. A lot of kids grow up and they've never had to throw it to anybody in the post. So what, what do you mean throw it to the big guy? And that's, a, that's a, a skill that you have to. So beyond all the great work that Jakob's done and an approach, I, I read somewhere today that uh, I forget who it was, one of the coaches that's in the tournament said, it's not, a, it's not about the coaching, it's about the sweat that the player put into it. And he continues to address all of his weaknesses and he's been a leader um, for us. But we need everybody, as we know with our team. Uh, and you're right, I think the backcourt, there's a correlation with backcourt playing well and, and uh, we've got some leadership there, some seniors that have been around and that's what it's gonna come down to. But we still are gonna start with trying to get him the ball and. Uh, whether or not there's double teams and different things um, to focus on. But I, I did go back through a little different file, even as he was a freshman, you know, and I told him this in the summer when we were trying to convince him to stick around. I don't think we knew what we had. We recruited a really athletic kid from Austria that, that you know, real, uh, you know, we were encouraged and we couldn't wait to coach him and watch him develop. And I think once we had him in the program, it was like, wow, this, this kid's going to be special. But yet, I think a lot of what we did a year ago revolved around DeLon, DeLon Wright. And so this year, it's, it's breaking into some new file cabinets, talking to some people about getting the ball to the bigs. Um, and then it's been a constant effort of throwing it in there and, and focusing on doing that. So um, you're right. He's a unique, unique guy, but he can't get the ball if our backcourt doesn't, doesn't take care of their uh, end, of the, end of the bargain. Over here to your left, Coach. Right here. Go ahead. Uh, Larry Bradrock from Deseret News. I was wondering if, you know, is it a bigger thrill to come into this tournament uh, as a 14 seed coaching Montana or to come in a high seed coaching at Utah? And also, uh, which is easier to deal with, being, uh, with a lot of expectations or not many? No, that's a, that's a great question. And I, I know it sounds uh, maybe like coach speak and monotonous answers, but I don't pay, I haven't paid any attention, you know, to what seed we are. The, the excitement uh, just had the head coaches meeting with the ADs and the SIDs. And that's something when you get into that room and you have, you know, the chairman and NCA people involved and you go through some of that informational, those meetings get your blood pumping. You get a pin, you, you know, some special things, but um, not much changes. It's always about trying to win the next game, um, you know, and and advancing. The numbers completely go out the window. I haven't paid any attention to seeds or I had a friend ask me if I filled out my bracket and uh, who the other three teams were that I picked to be in the final four. I said, I haven't, honestly, I, I was kind of an eye-opening experience to see who was even here. You know, when you're looking at uh, the different coaches that are in this region and it's no disrespect to anything else going on around us. There's a lot of respect for those people, but We've been so focused on trying to win the game against Fresno State that the numbers and all that stuff, I think, go out the window, the seeds. Right there. Larry, how much is the benefit now with Jakob this year as opposed to last year going into any game this season or the tournament, knowing that 
you don't have to worry about him going to the free throw line as you did last year because he's improved so much. No, it's been huge. You know, 70%, maybe a little bit over that compared to in the 40s. And, and I know I feel good about it, but I think Jakob feels good about it. You know, that's the one thing subconsciously I think he is a big man. If you watch last year, and again, we broke down a lot of film and tried to help him, uh, you know, so we could see it. Uh, a lot of his post moves a year ago were fast and off balance, and I think he's always been such an agile big guy. Regardless of who it's been behind him, he's always tried to outquick him. And um, I think subconsciously some of that could be because he wasn't a very good free throw shooter. The, the two things we knew for sure that were going to happen a year ago if he made a quick post move, assuming it didn't go in, was he was never going to get an offensive rebound and he was never going to get fouled. And uh, so I think him getting stronger, slowing down, being more of a threat in the post has given him a sense of relief that if I do get fouled, which he gets fouled a lot, uh, he's capable of going up there. And, you know, we shot a ton of free throws today in practice. These games will come down to some little things. And as silly as it sounds, that the free throw is going to be a big, a big part of it. And, and it's comforting to know that he can make three out of four. Back there. Uh, Julia Lopez, CBS Fresno. Coach, Mountain West Player of the Year in Marvell Harris, what do you see on film and how do you feel like you can slow him down in his play? Well, I'm not sure you can slow him down. Uh, what I see in a, in a basketball player is, a, is somebody that's playing with a lot of confidence. And it's a little bit rare uh, for most players, not just college players, but to be, a, be able to be a threat from the three-point line, uh, a threat from the mid-range game, and then also the ability to get to the rim. You know, oftentimes, even if you're in the NBA, it's usually maybe you have two of those you know, elements, but to have all three of those facets to his game, um, you know, has been great. And he's, I've, I've watched a lot of film. I'm super impressed, um, you know, and talked to a lot of people and scouting reports and he's the real deal, you know, he's the real deal. And I think it's really important to know that the reason that they're here is that they've had some great performances from a bunch of other guys as well. It takes a team, but he's certainly the, uh, the head of the snake. He's a great passer. You know, a little bit reminds me of Delon, in that he he can rebound, he can provide assists. He's a steals guy. It's not just about scoring points. He's found a way to stuff the stat sheet a little bit, and uh, so he's pretty productive in a lot of areas. Anything else? You've seen him play quite a bit. What's your suggestion for slowing him down? <laughs> Come on, we'll talk. Okay, thank you for your time, Coach. Okay.
Yes, Miss Morocco. Uh, my favorite stenographers are Jamie and Pam. They bring me coffee, and my second team is uh, Michelle and Teresa, please. How's Clay doing? She, she was pretty good. She wasn't too much. She wasn't bad at all. She was pretty good. No. She was always dressed very, very nicely. She likes wearing dresses, and she looked... Nineteen? I only got eighteen stories, so there's one that I'm missing. <laughs> I'm not sure which one that is, but I'm missing one story about you. For some reason, between her, Michelle, and Pam, I'm missing that one story. I don't know why they're trying to hide it. There's something there that all three you must you must have black you must have blackmail on them. Exactly. We have more to talk about there. Yes. I still tell people the Shanghai story, and people don't believe me. They think I'm just telling a joke, and I'm like, no, this is serious. This happens. I'm glad that he is still here. He's still um, among us. That's all for the questions today. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. I will uh, walk really hard. Yes, it's gone.
We're ready to begin with our athletes from Seton Hall. Like, like to point a rep from our the SID office. Tom Chen is right here. If you should you need any assistance, we have student athletes Isaiah Whitehead, Angel Delgado, Derek Gordon. We'll now take questions for our student athletes. The <laughs> let's wait for a microphone. Let's let's get him a mic, please. What's it been like? What's the feel been so far since you got here as far as the excitement and the atmosphere and the build up? Uh, I mean, it's, it's been tremendous so far. Uh, but I, I can speak for all of us. I know that we just can't wait to get out there tomorrow and just compete at a high level. I mean, we worked all season for this to just be in a position we are now, and we just got to take advantage of it. Yeah, I, I'm just feeling blessed to be here because it's not everybody can get here. We worked a lot really hard to to be in this position right now and I'm just feeling good I know the whole team feeling great too um, it's a great experience uh, good to be back and um, just getting out here early with these guys and getting adjusted to their breathing and everything I mean it's been great so far and uh, my guys were ready to go hold on let's get a microphone too this is being recorded so raise your hand we'll bring a mic to you yeah Derek you talked about coming back your experience on, on this team, you know, a lot of these guys haven't been to the tournament, but you have. What have your your leadership, you've been talking to them about your experience? Um, just stay composed. I mean, it's it's going to be up and down. Um, that, that's why they call it March Madness. I mean, so whether we go up or they go up, we got to stay composed. Um, I mean, it's, it's very easy to talk to these guys and these guys listen. Um, and I'm very sure that we'll go out there and we'll take care of business. Back there. Meyer Metcalf, uh, ESPN for Isaiah. But what did you all think on Selection Sunday when you saw that you would be facing uh, Gonzaga, a team that's had a lot of success uh, throughout the history of the program? Uh, we knew it was going to be tough. Uh, I mean, they're an experienced group. Uh, they have Kyle. Uh, he's a tremendous player. Uh, I think he's probably uh, All-American in college. So, I mean, they've been here before. I think this is probably like their 17th or 18th straight time being here. So it's going to be a tough first game, but I think we're up for the challenge. Go ahead. Zach Rizor in New York Post. Uh, for Derek, your defense, the team's defense has kind of been its calling card this year. How big is that going to be against a team like that who might not have seen your level of defense this year? Uh, it's going to be huge. Uh, for the most part, uh, just from watching film on them, uh, we've seen a lot of teams, they weren't playing as aggressive as we do. Um, so that's something that we was focusing on in practice um, these past couple of days that we got to just go out there and throw the first punch. We got to be aggressive. Right here. Go ahead. George Blackshear for WSOU. For any of you guys to answer, what have you drawn from going up against a Henry Ellenson and Luke Fisher from Marquette that you can help you when you play against Wiltshire and Sabonis for Gonzaga? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of the same because these guys, it's just like, it's the same thing because they big guys, they, they got a lot of skills, but I just got to play tough and play hard, man, because that, that's, that's how you win the, the battle all the time. You got to be tough and play hard. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, Derek, Eddie Pels from AP. Given your role as the first openly gay player in college basketball, do you feel like there's more of a microscope on you that you have to perform well to prove anything, or do you just go out and play? No. I mean, I don't feel I don't have anything to prove to nobody. I mean, the story has been out since 2014, um, so it's not really – it shouldn't be a not, it shouldn't be a story as it is. I mean, my teammates know, everybody knows. So I mean, there's no pressure at all. It's just me going out there and doing what I know how to do. Let's go right here. This is uh, just Jerry from uh, Carino from the Asbury Park Press. Uh, this is for Z and, and and Derek. Just as people who, who love basketball, how much are you looking forward to seeing Ish match up against Kyle Wilcher? It seems like a fantastic, you know, really intriguing matchup. Uh, I think uh, Ish is a tremendous defender. So I mean, he's. He's always up for a challenge. Uh, he's battled with some of the best players in the Big East all, uh, all conference and definitely not conference of who we played. Uh, and I think he's one of the most underrated defenders in the country. I mean, he just really gets after it. And I think that helped him during the season to really look forward to playing against Kyle. Let's go back there again. Uh, Meyer Metcalf, ESPN. Uh, for Derek, 
What's the difference between uh, the squad we saw in January that lost four out of five, I believe, and the team we're watching now that has finished so strong and has won four in a row? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> it's a lot different now, of course. I mean, with this group of guys, uh, I just had a meeting with them and I told them, I mean, it's all about winning. I mean, the more we win, the more everybody's going to get recognized. And um, these guys bought into that. And uh, we're very unselfish. We're a very unselfish group. We don't worry about points. We don't worry about rebounds. We just worry about the outcome of the game and that's winning. And I mean, when you have everybody that's on that same page, I mean, we can beat anybody in the country. Right here. Derek, just following up on, on what he said, you talking about two years ago, how the story's kind of old about you. You come out and says, do you feel like that's a sign of growth um, for for everybody around, just that it's not really a big deal? I would hope so. I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm not the one to judge. I mean, I, I, I know who I am. Everybody knows. So, just as I said before, I'm not, I'm not out to prove anything. I mean, it's more, I know what I have to do. Um, I know my skill level, so. I mean, he's just going out there and doing what I know how to do with my teammates, so. Back over here. Isaiah, Dave Willie with KCNC TV here in Denver. What was it like for you um, being Mr. Basketball in New York, knowing all of the legendary players that have also been named that, and even before there was even a Mr. Basketball, the Dr. J's and people like that who played in New York? I mean, it was a huge accomplishment, uh, but I think just growing up behind guys like Sebastian Telfair and Lance Stevenson that all won those awards, uh, I really just wanted to do it. I mean, it was kind of a, a thing in, in Coney Island where I'm from. I mean, if you're the best basketball player in New York City, you have to get that award. So, I mean, it was definitely a, a thing I wanted to win since I was younger. Let's go right here first. Isaiah, I was wondering if you could just uh, talk about Derek as a teammate and as a leader and, and what he brings to this team at this time of year? Uh, I mean, he brings he brings out emotion. He brings everything. I mean, he just he just picks us up when we're down. I mean, we're a young, real young group. So I mean, he's the the lone senior on the team. So he really helps us in a lot of in a lot of different ways. Just either it's really just about missing shots or really just getting back on defense. Just any any little thing he helps us with. And I think he's been doing that. And he really really helped us since he's got here in the summertime. George Blakeshee of WSU. Isaiah, you've played up here in Denver before, the high altitude. You know its effects on your body. Have you reached out to your teammates? Have you been helping them as well with after practice, waking up or just preparing, being another helping hand and giving them advice? Uh, I mean, that was so long ago, I, I kind of forgot what it felt like. But I mean, I, I've been through it. We've been out here for two days already preparing. Uh, and I, I think they really get in the hang of it, just, just of how difficult it is to really get up and down the floor at this altitude. So I mean, but I think we, we've, We've grown accustomed to it in these last few days, so it shouldn't be a problem tomorrow. Derek, I'm Mark Kisler with the Denver Post. You, you've transferred, and you made this move. Two things. How easy is it to become a leader in a short period of time? And second, was the move you made, how worthwhile was that? Um, well, to answer your first question, uh, it, it definitely has been. Uh, it's been an adjustment, definitely. Uh, coming in here, I mean, starting at my past two schools and then coming in here, coming off the bench, uh, it has definitely been an adjustment. And me, personally, being vocal, a vocal leader, um, I was more always the silent type. I let my game speak for itself. Um, but these guys are very easy to talk to. Um, so I really didn't have to do as much. Um, but just bringing that killer attitude and uh, winning attitude to them and um, it all started in practice um, first day I stepped on campus and um, they kind of followed me and um, what was your second question sorry you made the move how worthwhile was it and did you think it was a risk and did the risk pay off a risk as far as what as far as transferring and making this move. um no I didn't look at it like that I mean I was going back to my home state to play my last year um, the coming off the bench thing really didn't affect me. Just like I said, I'm, I'm a winner. So, I mean, regardless of if I would have started coming off the bench, it really doesn't matter to me. I mean, I embraced the role and I, I, I took advantage of it. I mean, Coach Willard, he told me from day one what my role was and um, what I'm capable of doing at that role. And, I mean, I, I was excited for it. I mean, it was a new role for me. Um, and my, my job was just to make sure that, I mean, come in and do what I was supposed to do. Right here. Uh, Clayton Collier from WSOU. Uh, Isaiah, for this team, I mean, uh, 
Gonzaga defends 29% from the three, but they haven't exactly seen you know, some of the guard play of, of Seton Hall's caliber. Uh, do you guys take that into account? Do you look to drive first in this game? Uh, I mean, we definitely going to look to drive more uh, just because of those two great big men that they have. We try to uh, do as much as possible just to put them under a little pressure, either, either it's in a little pick and roll action or just going to the basket, really just trying to make them foul us or really just trying to get them out of the game. Go ahead. Isaiah, this is Lindsey Jones from USA Today. What went into your preparation for the Big East tournament that led into those back-to-back-to-back -back -back games that you had? And what do you need to do to kind of continue this hot streak that you're on starting in this tournament? <clears throat> uh, I mean, I think the way we were winning at the, the end of the uh, regular season and the Big East really helped it a lot. Uh, we were a real confident group, so I mean, we really don't back down from anyone. Uh, I mean, I think that first game versus Creighton, I mean, it was the, it was probably the toughest game of the tournament just because it was the first. We really didn't know what to expect. Uh, but those second two, we just looked at, at it as an opportunity to really prove ourselves to the to the country. I mean, those teams are ranked top five in the country, so I mean, it was really just an opportunity to prove ourselves and. Just going forward, we really just have to keep playing defense. I mean, we, we have some great defensive numbers. And if we just keep that up, I mean, we'll be a hard team to beat. Up here. Isaiah, um, Hold on, wait for a moment. There you go. Isaiah, have you spoken to uh, Kamari Murphy of um, the Hurricanes, you know, another Lincoln product? And if you have talked to him, have you been following the team or how he's doing? And, you know, just talk a little bit about that. Uh, I mean, Kamari's always been a – a uh, good uh, brother to me basically since I was a freshman in high school. I mean, we played on the same team. Uh, but, I mean, I, I've been following him a lot. I mean, he's he's had a tremendous season so far. And, I mean, he just he just hit me up after the, the Big East tournament and just really told me to keep balling, just keep playing my game and just stay confident and, and all, all the good things will happen. Let's go right here first. For, for Isaiah and, and Angel, you kind of look at it and it's a unique situation for you guys because – Derek's a long senior on your team, but he's kind of new as well. As far as y'all experience factor, how do y'all kind of look at look at that? Uh, I mean, I think we really just hold each other accountable for everything we do, uh, and I think that that helps us out a lot. I mean, there's really no point in fingers. Uh, if one person does something, I mean, it's on the team. So I mean, that that really helped us grow up a lot throughout the year. So uh, I mean, it it really hasn't been tough. Uh, just I mean, Derek has been a huge addition, even though. He's new. He's really filled that leader role and really helped us out a lot. So, I mean, it, he made it a lot easier. Let's go back there. Uh, for all three, uh, what is your favorite pregame hype song? What's the song you like to listen to before you get ready to go out for a game for all three guys? Uh, I, I, I'm a Spanish guy. I listen to Spanish music. That's what, that's what I've been listening to because it motivates me a lot. That's what. Uh, I mean, it's just... I really don't have a specific uh, song, but I mean, once I see Angel jumping around to the Spanish music and, and just getting going and ready, just getting ready to get on the floor, I mean, it helps us out a lot just to get in a good mood and really, I think we really play well when we're not as serious as, as possible. I think when we're loose and we, we feel confident, and we're, we're all having fun, I think that's when we play our best. So I think Angel helps us out a lot before the game with, with the Spanish music and just jumping around and really to get us comfortable. Uh, Migos, I'll look at my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go right here. Um, guys, you didn't get ranked until this past week. Uh, from what Coach Willard said at Selection Sunday, felt you were a little bit under seated as well. Um, and now you have Gonzaga being favored in uh, some lines early on. Have you guys embraced being, you know, playing with a chip on your shoulder, being the underdog? Uh, yeah, I, I love that. Because they they say the same thing about Crane and we're not gonna win the first game, the biggest tournament, and we prove everybody wrong. That's that's what we we always talk about it. Hey, let's prove everybody wrong every time we go in the court. Uh I mean I think it's just about uh I mean, of course we feel that we should get more respect than than we usually do. Uh but I mean it's it's life, so you really just gotta move forward and just keep balling. Uh and I think we we've done a great job at that. Anything else? Okay, we'll dismiss our student athletes at this time. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, I've seen how coach, excuse me, Kevin Willard. We're going to open it uh, directly up for questions for coach. Right here. Uh, Kevin, just the, uh, I'm sorry, J.P. Pelsman, uh, Bergen Record. Uh, Kevin, just the fact that uh, this is the first time here for so many guys other than Der except for Derek, H how do you feel you guys have uh, handled so far just the, the, the hype of this and just the, the difference of it from, from a regular game? I, I think it's taken, us, it's taken us a couple days to get over the Big East Championship. You know, it's – we won Saturday. You know, we've had the late game Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday ended at 11. Um, you woke up Sunday and it was selection Sunday, and then that was a late day because we didn't get selected till late. We traveled out here on Monday. Uh, I thought Tuesday and Wednesday was the first couple days where we looked back to normal. We practiced really good. We practiced long today. Um, this group doesn't – they're – it's a fun group to be around because they just they just want to play the games. You know, they're sick and tired of me telling me about how good Wiltshire is and how good Sabonis is and got to keep Perkins. And they're done with that. They just want to get to Thursday and play, and that's that's kind of what this group has done really good. Let's go back there first, and then we'll come up here. Uh, Meyer Metcalf, ESPN. Kevin, wh what is the difference between the Seton Hall team that I believe went one and four in January during that rough stretch and the team we've watched over the last couple weeks that and you know, everything's kind of come together. I don't know if I have my schedule here. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we went um, at Nova, where nobody wins. I don't think anyone's won in 12 years there. Came home, played a really good Creighton. Uh, won a big game at Providence. Had Villanova home and had at Xavier. Kind of the schedule a little bit. Um, you know, we were playing pretty good basketball. We had beat Wichita State, won at Mar Marquette, and then, you know, had a really tough game at Villanova. We had the flu against Creighton the first time. Angel was sick. Isaiah was sick. Uh, and then the Villanova home game was a tough one. That was the one that, w that I thought we could have won. Uh, we lost by one at the buzzer. And then at Xavier is a really tough place to play. So sometimes the way the schedule was set up, um, that can kind of dictate in the Big East how you play. Uh, but with all those games, the only really bad game we played was Creighton. Everybody else, we had a chance to win at Nova. We had a chance to win at Xavier. It was a four-point game with three minutes to go. So uh, I never really got worried about when we were losing four out of five. I actually thought we were in really good shape. Uh, and then I thought the schedule kind of really dictated to our favor in the middle part of the Big East. So um, we've been playing pretty solid since – I would say the Wichita State game. Since that time, I thought Isaiah's matured. Uh, our defense has started getting a little bit more consistent, and we've been rebounding the basketball. So uh, sometimes, in co sometimes in college, you, you, wins and losses sometimes can be your, how your schedule kind of falls. Let's go right here on the left first. Jerry Carino, Asbury Park Press. Kevin, uh, the, uh, you mentioned Wiltshire and, and Sabonis. Uh, what do you want to see out of those? Matchups defensively from your guys from Ish and Angel when dealing with you know Gonzaga's big firepower guys there. Yeah, I mean those Wilcher and Sabonis are two of the better big guy combos I've seen in a long time in college basketball. Um, we've explained it to Angel and Mike and Ish. It's it's like playing the grown up version of Ellenson and Fisher, uh, just because you have a redshirt senior. Uh, Sabonis is a sophomore, obviously, but they. Uh, they're a little bit more mature. Wiltshire is a much more mature. Ellenson um, shoots it a little bit better from the outside. Uh, and Sabonis, you know, is so skilled. That he's a tough guy to double because he passes the ball so quickly out of the post. Most, most big guys don't pass it quickly. He does a great job of passing it. So um, it's definitely two big matchups. I think, to be honest with you, the way Perkins and McClellan have been playing for them the last – five to six games, um, to me, that's just as big a matchups as anybody. Right here. Coach, uh, Eddie Pels with AP. I think Derek had mentioned in some past interviews that there were some programs that might have shied away from him. Did you see any risk in bringing him in here? Um, no. 
uh, once I sat down with Derek, and we recruited Derek at a high school, so I, know, I knew Derek pretty well. Um, when I sat down with Derek and I said, Derek, this must be about basketball. I said, because that's, um, that's what you're telling me. I said, is this going to be about basketball? And he said, Coach, I just want to go someplace and play hoops. Um, I want to be close to home. I want to be close to my family. Uh, and once we both were on the same page, there was, I mean, it's 2016, you know. Um, he's such a, it, it's been such a blessing having him here. Our guys accepted him right away. I mean, it, it's just, it's, it was such a non-factor for me. It was a non-factor for our guys. Um, it was a non-factor for Seton Hall University. It just shows you what a great place it is to go. Uh, they're extremely, um, it, it, it was so supportive for him. I think it just made the transition so easily, so easy that, um, you know, it, it's just never been an issue. It hasn't been an issue all year. It's, it's kind of weird. This is the first time since, since the year we've really been asked about it. So it's, it's just not, it's just a non-issue. Clayton Collier, WSOU. Uh, Coach, how important is it to get Angel involved right away in this game? Yeah, I mean, I, it's it, 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 it's important to get him touches because it keeps teams honest. Uh, as much as we run pick and rolls for Isaiah and Kadeen, um, it's important that we get him the basketball. They do a very good job of doubling the post. They do a good job coming from the weak side guard. Um, but we do need to go after Sabonis and Wilcher. Uh, we got to make them defend. Anytime you have big guys who are so skilled and, and put up the numbers they do, we need to go after them. Um, Mark does a great job of protecting them. So it's going to be, you know, uh, it, we got to get them involved, but we got to make sure we pick the right spots to get them involved. Anything else? Oh, up here? Yeah, how do you see that? I mean, you, 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 need, you need sunglasses up here. Uh, coach, also, <laughs> with, the, um, with the, the way that Gonzaga defends the three, um, I mean, do you think it's just a matter of, you know, they haven't faced as high a level of competition as, you know, Seton Hall? or No. <laughs> BYU, St. Mary's, at SMU, um, UCLA, Arizona, Tennessee, Connecticut, Texas A&M, Washington, Pittsburgh, uh, this is a this is as good this is probably as good a basketball team as we've played. I don't I don't look at defensive numbers as much. Um, I, we don't we're not going to change what we do just because they defend the three really well, which they do. Um, Providence defends the three really well. Villanova, you just can't go in there and say, well, uh, they've seen great competition. This is a, this is. I think this is why everybody's saying it's going to be such a good matchup. I think this is two excellent teams in a, in a. You know with great players. I mean, you know, it, it's it's a really good matchup. So they defend well at the three-point line. We don't take a we don't we don't take a whole lot of threes anyways. But I'm not going to sit there and in 3 days try to change what we do and who we are. This time of year we are who we are. We'll keep doing what we do offensively. Or in the back. Uh, NCAA tournament, we see a lot of young stars. Uh, you sometimes have challenges balancing the responsibility. What's been your message to Isaiah to help him kind of balance the expectations and remain poised in this moment? I'm sure he probably told you this. Z, Z just balls. He doesn't. I always love when people ask about expectations or matchups or something. These kids just these kids just play hoops, man. That's just who they are. It's in their DNA. He's a Brooklyn kid. Um, you know he doesn't he doesn't look at this as like obligations or pressure. He doesn't see that. You know he just he looks at it as another opportunity for him to go out and play hoops. You know that's what makes this group fun is. You know they don't sit there and they don't look at it and say, well, you know Gonzaga is a three point favorite. Well, that, they're disrespecting us. They'll say that, but at the end of the day, they they just don't care. They, they know Gonzaga is a really good basketball team, and they know that they're, they're going to have to go out and play. Um, all the other stuff is kind of they just they just don't get that they're too young. I mean they, they Angel the Angel probably didn't understand one question you guys asked them. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's just you know they're just they just know that they got to play really good players this time of year and they got to be ready to play and that's kind of there are no expectations. My guys as the as everyone knows, 
the only pressure my guys have is that they have to play hard and they have to defend. There is no other pressure. So they don't – there's no expectations for them. Their only expectation is to play hard. If they don't play hard, that's when they're in trouble and that's when they're – that's when they'll get it. But for the most part, my, my kids bring it. They've been bringing it all year. So that's why they don't feel any pressure. That's why they don't understand what pressure is. Kevin John Blanchett of the Spokesman Review. Uh, you mentioned the evolution of Gonzaga's guards in the last six, seven games. Regarding Josh Perkins in particular, you talked to the challenges that, that he presents. Well, I, you know, Perkins and McClellan, I, I don't think McClellan missed a shot in his last three games. I think he shot 82% in the WC, in the, in the tournament. Um, and Perkins, you know, plays, I, I think he's playing phenomenal. He, he's, He's running their team. He's not getting out of control. Um, he's getting the ball to Sabonis and Wiltshire in the right places. Um, he's he's really he's shooting the ball at a, an extremely high level. Um, he reminds me a little bit of Dante Smith Rivera right now, uh, the way he's playing. He's playing under control. When they need to make a big shot, he's made a couple really big shots. Um, that's when, when I first got the draw, everybody said, well, your guards are better and th this and that. And I, I've watched from the SMU game down and man, I, I like their guards. I think they're really good. Um, you know, I can't say the kid's name. I don't want him to get mad at me. Um, number three, Drang, Dranginus. I struggle with those. He reminds me of JP Mercura from Xavier, a kind of a glue guy. Um, Gets offensive rebounds. He's defending, you know, he defends. McClellan's shooting the ball great. He's a great defender. They're all redshirt seniors. I don't know how Mark does it. There must be camp. I mean, he must have special water up there to get these guys to stay for six years. Um, they're just, a, they're really, they're really a good basketball team. I mean, it's, it's a big challenge for us. Okay, that's all the time we have. Awesome. Thank you very much, Coach. Thanks, guys.
We're ready to begin with the student athletes from Fresno State. We have Julian Lewis, Cesar Guerrero, Marvell Harris. We'll now take questions. Wait, please wait for a microphone. When you're asking questions, if you raise your hand, we'll bring a mic to you. Questions for our student athletes. Kyle Goon, Salt Lake Tribune. Uh, for any of the student athletes, maybe Marvell first. Uh, you know, what, what are you going to see about Utah's defense and uh, what they do to make it difficult to shoot inside the arc? Um, well, they have a big post presence. And, um, they have big guards, physical guards, um, athletic. They use their length. And, uh, they, I know they play a zone. So it's a, big, it's a big challenge for us getting in gaps, trying to make a play for the next guy because we know they have a big post presence. Caesar, you want to answer that as well? Um, well, they got a big post presence inside, and they're very athletic as well. And uh, you know, they get they uh, they get into you. Uh, they're a very pesky team, and uh, they're really good in the defensive side as well. And uh, you know, we're gonna have to rebound and uh, get in the paint and make an extra pass and uh, just do what we've been doing these past couple games. Julian, um, I think we should just run. <laughs> Just run and get in trans, get out in transition to make them keep up with us in our fast place to play we play with. And on the defensive end, we just got to stay under them and protect the gaps. Let's go right here. Matt Stevens, Fort Collins, Colorado. And Marvell, had you heard about Reggie Miller calling you Marvell Harrison in the mm -hmm. championship game and as conference player of the year? What was kind of going through your head when someone couldn't get your name right? Well, uh, I was during the game, I couldn't hear him or anything like that. But after I, I had heard and I had seen the tweets and everything, but it, it didn't really affect me. It doesn't affect me now. Um, we won a championship. That was our goal. Now we're here and we're ready to win more games. So it didn't really affect me or get to me. Let's go right here first. Go ahead. For Caesar and Julian, um, you guys transferred in, correct? What has made Fresno State kind of uh, be become your, your home and, and how have they kind of received you as transfers? Well, Coach Terry's done a, a good job in, uh, you know, getting us acclimated and, uh, you know, just making us feel at home when we first got there. Uh, he's a great coach, great coaching staff. And, uh, you know, they're, they're like uncles, dads, and stuff like that. So. Uh, they make us feel at home, and uh, they take care of us. They love us, and uh, you know they're just really good people that are mentors for us. Let's go back in the back, right? Uh, Myron Metcalf, ESPN, uh, for Marvell. This is a Utah squad that's you know run some people off the court pretty early. How, how important are those you know first ten minutes in tomorrow's game uh, for you guys to try to build some momentum against the squad? Um, every possession for us is important. We have to value the basketball. We have to make decisive decisions. We have to just we have to take care of the basketball. Every possession count because um, they can come back and hunt you uh, later times in the game. So every possession is critical for us. Right here, hey. front. Hey guys, Mark Warzowski from the Fresno Bee. You had quite a celebration on Saturday in Vegas and then Sunday on campus during the announcement. What have you guys done in the last couple of days to kind of clear aside, you know, those things and you know, focus on uh, the task at hand tomorrow? Um, we just, after all the celebration was over, after we just got back to doing what we do, we uh, watched film, we got back in the gym, we shot the ball, we walked through some of their sets, actions, and we just been focused. So I think after all that was over, after it all set in, okay, it's time to play now. And we had to uh, lock in and stay focused. Well, the dust is settled. I mean, we're, we already know who we're playing, and uh, we just kept that in our regular routine. Uh, we're not switching anything up. Uh, we're comfortable with the routine we're in. And, uh, you know, once, once the routine starts going, you know, it's just regular. It's another game for us, but it's a big game, and it's a, it's a very important game. Marvell, again, what are you and the two guys sitting to your right, what do you think you've done to establish a foundation for this program for the future? I mean, are you confident that, uh, you know, it's not going to take another 15 years for the Bulldogs to get back to the NCAA tournament based on what you got, the precedent you've set and the, what's happened this year? Mm -hmm. 
um, not to be rude or anything to you, Mark, but I think we just more focused on t tomorrow's game. And right now we're just thinking about that and what we got ahead of us. Can we get the mic back right behind you? Uh, I was wondering if you guys had, had played a, a, a big man similar or, or to Yaka Pirtle this year or someone maybe you played that reminds uh, you of what he can do. We played a per we played a post person like UNLV Zimmerman. He he remind me kind of the do Yaka man we playing this week. I mean tomorrow's game and we just got to do a good job on him and keep him out of the paint. Doctor. Myron Mackey of ESPN, I've been asking uh, all the players this question. But what is your preferred, all three guys, pregame hype song? I mean, what's the song you like to listen to before you go into a game? <laughs> I, don't even, I don't have no hype song. I just listen to something that get me vibed out and just have my mind focusing on one thing, and that's the person I'm going tomorrow. And, you know, these two guys, I don't know what they listen to. <laughs> um, I listen to... YG, Future, just guys who like got a lot of energy when they're rapping, things like that. Um, with me, uh, I'm listening to some oldies right now, so I'm Take listening nine. to some uh, Roger and Zap, uh, <laughs> Computer Love, you know, and uh, I Want to Be Your Man or something like that, you know, and uh, you know, it's getting me into the to a little rhythm. Been, I listened to it uh, last week in the Mountain West Conference Tournament, and uh, I'm not going to go away from it because we won, so... Uh, just gonna keep on listening to those songs. Uh, I got a song. I listened to one song. Uh, he, he a new rapper. His name Lil Uzi. <laughs> <laughs> he got a song called Enemies. So I just, I just, I just vibe out to that. <laughs> Let's go over here. All right, Julia Lopez from CBS Fresno. Um, this goes to any of you guys. Utah compared you guys to Oregon, the style of play that you have. Being compared to a number one seed, just how nice is that? That's pretty good. To someone compared to the number one seed, um, we like to run. We like to play fast. We like to keep the pace of going, uh, flow going. And I feel like what well, we should do that tomorrow to keep these guys on on their uh, necks. Guys, Tommy Tran, ABC Fresno. A lot of times in the tournament, they talk about teams with experience. And even though Fresno State hasn't been at this point in 15 years, um, you guys have played together for, for a few years now. You guys are going up against a Utah team that was in the tournament. What do you think about the whole experience factor and that you know, even though Fresno State as a program doesn't have it, you guys have been around for a few years playing together? Uh, I think it helps us a lot. We have a veteran backcourt. We also have um, guys who are coming off the bench who are older, not freshmen, uh, JUCO transfers, things like that. So I think the experience helps you a lot. And it, uh, it helps us not get rattled, being older players, being in certain situations before. and. Uh, it just helps us stay focused, and it rubs off on the younger guys. So I think they have the same approach. With um, with the experience, uh, Julian Lewis played uh, his freshman year at Texas in the NCAA tournament. So um, I've asked him a couple questions of how it is, and uh, you know the routine that we got to go through, and what he did uh, to prepare himself for the game. And um, he said it's just what he's doing right now, just mellow, calm, and uh, you know just go through the process that you have to go through, through media and uh, practice, and it's going to be very hectic. But for the most part, he just said, just enjoy the process. Enjoy everything because, you know, it's our senior year, so we got to enjoy every moment of it and uh, give it all we got. Anything else? Okay, we'll dismiss the student athletes at this time. Thank you, man. We have Fresno head coach Rodney Terry. C coach, if we can just start with you, uh, get some thoughts on being here in Denver and your matchup for tomorrow. 
Well, we're excited about being here. Um, obviously, had a great weekend uh, week, a weekend ago at, in Vegas, and uh, uh, we're excited about uh, our opponent, uh, Utah. Very well coached team, team that uh, has experience, has size, and uh, uh, very good opponent. Thank you, Coach. Questions? Ronnie, Tommy Tran, ABC Fresno. I don't know if you heard the other question. I was just bringing up the experience factor of a team that hasn't been to this point, but obviously you have as an assistant, your, your staff has. Um, we, we talked about Julian with some experience, yet you have a team that has played together for a few years. What do you think about that experience, especially going up against the Utah team that's been here before? Well, I think this time of year, you, 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 land, uh, you tend to – to want to lean on the experience, you know, and uh, we have a, a senior backcourt uh, with uh, Marvell Harris, obviously, and uh, Caesar and, and Julian. Both those guys have all played in highly competitive games uh, over the course of their careers. And, uh, um, you know, Julian got a chance to play in the NCAA tournament's freshman year. Um, you know, we got a chance two years ago to play against, you know, our opponent that we have right now. And uh, those guys performed very well at their place. So, um, you know, I don't think the stage is too big for these guys right now. I think they're excited about the opportunity and, and hopefully going to seize the moment. It's right back there. Meyer Metcalf, ESPN. Uh, obviously, this is a, a team that has kind of run some people off the court at different stretches this season. How, how important are the first 10 minutes tomorrow? And just, you know, you all getting out to a good start. Well, we always talk about no matter if we get off to a good start, a bad start, we're going to be who we are and we're going to play – we're going to compete for 40 minutes. And, uh, you, know, you, you know, sometimes you'll get off to a good start, sometimes you won't. We're just going to keep playing and keep working the game. And, uh, you know, we'd like to, as a coach, we'd love to, have to get off to a great start. But uh, nevertheless, either way, we're going to play hard on both ends of the floor. And, you know, um, again, I don't think at this point right now, no one's just going to come out and knock anybody out without anybody recovering. And no one continue to compete at a high level. Um, you, know, and, you know, I'm looking forward to that to be no different tomorrow. Over here. All right, Julia Lopez from CBS Fresno. Coach, entering the Mountain West Tournament, you guys had a calm demeanor about yourselves. It seems like it's the exact same way with them talking to the media. Are you just preaching that the exact same way entering NCAA Tournament? We're a confident team, and uh, we're a confident team because uh, you know, I think our guys are playing for each other, and uh, they have each other's back, and you know, we got to be a pretty good executing team. When we call something, guys go out and do a good job of, of executing what we're trying to get done, and they're playing within our system in terms of the way we want to play. Um, you know, when you're doing that and you're playing for each other and uh, you have good team chemistry, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, you're able to fight through some adversity throughout games, and you're able to continue to compete for 40 minutes the way we want to at a very high level. Other questions? Right there. Coach, with your bigs, Karachi, Cullen, Terrell, what do you expect uh, your post players to go up against a, a true throwback center in, in Potal and how that matchup's going to play out that you think tomorrow night? Well, he's a very good player. I mean, obviously, he was, you know, MVP of the Pac-12. You know, every opponent had the game plan for him. Uh, he's a terrific young, young talent. He really is. And uh, we're going to defend him by committee. Um, you know, we've been fortunate enough to play against some really good teams throughout the course of the year, two other Pac-12 opponents that had size as well. Um, you know, and he'll be a team guard, you know. And, and again, he, he's the type of player that not, not only, you know, is successful himself, but he makes other guys around him better. Um, so, you know, you're never going to stop a great player. We're going to try to contain him. And, and hopefully do a great job on his supporting cast. He has a really good supporting cast around him that's older as well. And, uh, again, we're just going to battle for 40 minutes and uh, try to, by committee, do a good job with him. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay. Coach Mark Orzowski from the V. Is your program set up for sustained success? I mean, it was, this has been a slow build for you, but has it been gradual and now you think, okay, you're here, but you think I can keep this going based on the foundation that's in place? Well, I think we worked really hard over the, the five years that I've been here to, to build, establish a culture uh, that's, that's built for winning and sustaining success. And, uh, you know, that's the thing that we've really, you know, taken a lot of pride in. And uh, it's been a process. It really has. I mean, you had to be competitive first. 
uh, you know, and get you know guys that uh, can compete at this level. Uh, secondly, you had to learn how to win. What goes into winning, what goes into losing, and uh, I think we've had a chance to experience, you know, that that whole experience there. And I think we'll have some you know, guys that'll come back that have had a chance to to gain some valuable experience uh, throughout the course of this season, and uh, they'll help some of the young players. They'll be coming into our program and. They'll show them the way. They'll show them uh, how hard you have to work, uh, the commitment level, and uh, really try to maintain the culture that we tried to establish. You think some of the underclassmen, they see what's happening to the seniors now, the attention they're getting, and you know, going out like they have, and they say to themselves, hey, I want some of that too? Well, I think sure. And, then, and again, we, you know, I think not only are the, the coaching staff holding those guys accountable, I think they've gotten to a point where they hold themselves accountable both on and off the court. Okay, thank you very much for your time, Coach. Okay, thank you.
that's poor planning on.
We're ready to begin with the student athlete from Gonzaga. We have Kyle Dringuinis, Eric McClellan, and Kyle Wilcher. If you wish to ask a question, please raise your hand. We'll bring you a mic, and we'll get going. Questions for our student athletes. All right, my cap, ESPN, uh, for Kyle and Eric, what do you do with a guy like Isaiah Whitehead who's really been playing some great basketball uh, for this team in recent weeks? Uh, we just got to do a good team uh, team effort. You know, uh, he's obviously a very talented player, so uh, we have to do a good job just all helping each other out. Uh, we can't leave anyone alone just on the island, so we got to play uh, a good game in the gaps and uh, be there for our teammates. Could be where we have two Kyles up here, just to direct your questions appropriately. Right here. Uh, this is Eddie Pels from AP. I'll, um, anyone who wants to answer this, did you feel more a sense of relief when you beat St. Mary's, or uh, you, there was so much that went on this season, or, or did you just feel happy, or both? Eric, Eric you want to take the first? Uh, sure. Um, yeah, man, definitely. I mean, I feel like uh, the last month we've been playing our best basketball. You know, guys are really playing confident, playing free and playing loose. And obviously, you know, with, uh, you know, everything going around from media and fans, you know, um, you know, to not possibly making a tournament, you know, of course, you know, with that win, uh, it's a huge, it felt like a huge weight off our shoulders, you know, and, you know, although the, the pressure was on us, you know, you could never really tell just by the way we were playing. So, I just think we need to come out with the same mentality, man, that we've been having uh, the past uh, month or so, and you know, let the let the chips fall where they may. Eden Lassie, Gonzaga Bulletin. Um, earlier, Seton Hall's players talked about it took a little bit of time to come down from the high of winning their conference tournament. Did you guys have the same experience, or was it back to business right away? Let's go right down the line here, Kyle. Um, I think, you know, we definitely enjoyed that the victory. Um, like Eric said, it was a big, big relief for us, and um, so we felt good about it. But uh, we're hoping to kind of use that momentum from the WCC tournament um, and and use that in the first round and and uh, kind of just keep things going from there. Eric, <coughs> no, nothing to add. That's fine. No. Okay. He covered it all. Okay. <laughs> Right there. Kelly Lyle with the Fort Collins, Colorado. Uh, this is for Kyle Wilcher. Do you feel at times almost like a little bit of a throwback with so much emphasis on small men running around in the backcourt, being a big man, playing a big man's game? Uh, I mean, I just play my game every night. Uh, I don't care what people call it. I just, uh, you know, I just try to do whatever it takes to win, and uh, I pride myself on being a skilled player. So, obviously, shooting the ball and then playing off of that. So, uh, you can call it whatever you want. Right here. This is for uh, Kyle Wilcher or anybody else who wants to join in. In what ways have you guys seen um, Sabonis grow this year, from last year to this year? And what do you guys need from him to do? What do you need him to do for you in this tournament? I mean, his game's grown a lot. He's obviously a beast on the boards. He's really stepped it up there. And, you know, this year especially, just being able to play with so many double teams thrown at him and playing with confidence. And his mid-range jumpers uh, have really been evolving. So. Uh, we're just going to need him to continue to push us and, and kind of be that energy guy. He gets us going. So uh, for this tournament, you know, he just got to continue to play confidently, play aggressive, and I think he'll put, he'll be a, a big part of our team. Other questions? Okay, we'll dismiss our student athletes at this time. Thank you, gentlemen.
We have head coach Mark Pugh from Gonzaga. Coach, if you can just start by give some thoughts on your on being here in Denver and your matchup tomorrow. Well, we're uh, I know everybody says this, but I mean we mean this uh, deep into our hearts. We're thrilled to be here and be a part of this thing for the 18th consecutive uh, year. That's something that uh, you know we take very seriously and 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 means everything to uh, our program. And certainly, you know, to, to be able to come to Denver, you know, we've had, uh, we have a player uh, from Denver and Josh Perkins, had a great player from here uh, named Matt Bolden. So we've had, uh, you know, some good success recruiting here and, and, and also of, uh, you know, uh, won a first round game here uh, a while back. And it's, uh, you know, it was nice to get sent at least somewhere out in the, in the West region for our friends and fans and families. As far as the matchup is concerned, you know, the more I watch uh, Seton Hall, the, you just, the more I'm impressed with just how tough they are and kind of gritty. And, and for just a group of sophomores, uh, you know, the, the, the kind of their main core, it, it's, uh, they, they really, really came together. And uh, they're going to be a handful. They're going to be a handful in transition. They're going to be a handful on the, on the glass. And just they have, you know, a real ability to, to score in bunches and score in spurts. So, uh, you know, hopefully we'll play great. We played great in the conference tournament. Hopefully we can keep that going. Thank you, Coach. Questions? Hey, Coach. Eddie Pels from AP. Um, I watched the HBO special, a lot of it. That seemed like a big leap to – do but I don't know maybe it wasn't <laughs> no, and also it's a very big leap for me to do something like that yeah so <laughs> how did you make that decision and did it turn out as a good thing or a distraction oh gosh uh, first of all I want to commend the, the people that were there day to day uh, for HBO they're wonderful people and, and great guys and uh, I'm a pretty private person and I and I like keeping my program stuff private so it, it was you know when they approached us uh, you know to be honest with you there was a couple staff and marketing people in the university thought it'd be great for branding a couple of my assistants thought it would be great for uh, uh, recruiting uh, I wasn't really too into it <laughs> at all and uh, but I kind of deferred to you know those guys are kind of battling you know those battles on a daily basis and and uh, so I had a you know kind of just took a step back and listened to them it, it uh, I was worried about it we had a very young team we had a very immature team uh, at the start of this year and uh, so I, I didn't think we were going to be it was a great idea for that but uh you know, I, I've had a lot of comments about it a lot of people have said so I think it'll just remain to be seen what the end result is, but I've had uh, truly a lot of a lot of people come up and say they found some positive things about it. Kelly Lyle with the Fort Collins Colorado. Mark, just how much has size helped your team this year when you look at Sabonis, Wiltshire? Obviously, you lost a key big man early in the year, but yeah, uh, yeah, we did, and I just it seems like everybody forgets forgets that. I think that's the untold story of this team. Is I, I don't know a. Other team in the country that's lost. I mean, uh, Shema Karnowski is. I mean, he's a he's a national force. You can march him out in any game against any team out there, and they're going to have to deal with him on, you know, the defensive end and on the offensive end, and, and really have to game plan around him. So, uh, for this team to lose somebody of that caliber and and still get 26 wins and still get all the way back to the NCAA tournament, uh, I, I think is, a, is an amazing accomplishment, especially when it happened way back, you know, on the 1st of December when so much of our year and so much of our preparation was was made with, with Shem in mind. So really affected our depth. Uh, but at the same time, I think it really, you know, gave maximum minutes to a guy like Domus and, and just allowed him to just develop and develop and gets better every week and he's just a been a joy to to coach and and be around you know at practice outside of practice he's just he's a humble eager uh, uh 
guy that just he just he just welcomes coaching and and uh, the sky's the limit for him. Doctor, Byron McKeff, ESPN. Uh, coach, I'm wondering. Uh, we saw Gonzaga struggle in the first couple months of the season, maybe in ways that we hadn't watched this program struggle in past years. What's the difference between that earlier team and the one we watched win the uh, conference tournament? Well, again, like I, like I just said, I mean, when you lose somebody, I, I, you guys follow this stuff closer than I do, but, I mean, I, has anybody lost somebody like Karnowski out there? I mean, I, so we went from having our most experienced guy uh, to basically, you know, having lost four starters then. And, and then, you know, having an entirely new backcourt. You want those guys to be good, like, right now. And, I mean, you know, I, I, I probably wasn't as patient as I needed to be and was pressing them hard. And I think they could feel that. They, they could feel it from fans and media and, and people who just watch the program. And, and, but these guards, the guards, have got, they've, they've got better. They're making winning plays now. They're understanding what it takes to win. And valuing that, and then all along, you know, I think Domus kept kept getting better and better, and then Wilch is, uh, Kyle's has been a real, real steady hand all year for a guy who's had to log a lot of minutes, you know, because we went into this year, it's the first time I've done this, we, we didn't use two scholarships, we held on to them, we have two really, really good players sitting out, and uh, you know, we just didn't quite find maybe anybody that we thought could really, really help us so we saved him for the next class and, and then lo and behold Shemek goes down and I mean we've been we've been really really shorthanded at practice uh, this entire year more so than any I've ever ever uh, had to deal with so this group just deserves a ton of credit for that anything else up here it's really what? like impossible to see you guys. It's, <laughs> these lighting is like out of control here. <laughs> yeah, they did a nice job. Um, did they? <laughs> I mean, is this, is see, this the posture can, us coaches are supposed to take? We, we can see you great. <laughs> great. Um, you know, especially with what you went through this year, would you say is it unfair to judge a team just on how far they get into the tournament? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we we slug it out and battle and deal, you know, with with all kinds of uh, issues. I think the HBO guys have a real good feel for that after following us all year, whether it's everything from sickness to injuries to, you know, uh, lack of uh, – of confidence, that's, you know, that's a big thing with 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 college athletes too. You know, maybe frustrations, you know, over 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 their role, or you know, or just sometimes you, you hit these little bumps where you're just not playing very good. And uh, you know, these are long, hard journeys, and and I think you need to you really need to look at uh, you know what these guys accomplish over the course of a whole season, and, and you know, th this is. <clears throat> it's not I wouldn't call it just a crapshoot, but it's it's you know, it's it's one game and there's a lot of things that can go into games. They're, obviously these teams are here for a reason. They're here, they're either really, really good or they got really, really hot and won their won their conference tournament. So uh you know, to to just judge after you know, slugging it out for six months on, on one particular night seems uh rather shallow to me, but you know, it seems a lot of people do that. So I guess it's their prerogative. It's not one I've ever chosen to take. Any other questions? Okay, thank you for your time, Coach. Yep, thanks.
RTA, RTA final.